When it comes to cheap toys that hang on a spinning rack, right between the display of plastic sunglasses and a rack of invisible ink game and quiz books at a Stucky's off an exit just south of Interstate 40, only a few names come to mind. Ja Rule, no not that guy, we're talking about Ja Rule, the maker of such rack toys as Baywatch Binoculars, Ice Age Dinosaurs, and a big old bag of Cowboys and Indians. Another name that might come to your mind is Flintwood. No, not that Flintwood, but the Flintwood that made such classic rack toys as Starsky and Hutch's 3D Viewer. It was just a very cheap plastic Viewmaster. Planet of the Apes Pinball, or their best-selling Love Boat Barber Set. But one name that should come to your mind is La Army. Oh God, I hope I said that one right. Who made such classic backseat of the car vacation time waster toys like Land of Law Safari Shooter, the Battlestar Galactica Wallet, and the impressive Juicy and the Pussycats jewelry set. When it comes to rack toys, that is as best as you can do with a rack toy. Not only would they release a slew of rack toys, they would also help change the market when it came to water guns, and they would give us what might be the most annoying jingle in toy advertisement history, but we'll get to that a little later. The Army started up in 1947 under the name Ring Brothers Toy Wholesale. At the time, David W. Ring and his brother didn't know about selling toys on racks, so they sold them out of the back of their car. I guess you would call them trunk toys. Then, in early 1959, the brothers found themselves in Japan, and they found even cheaper toys than they were selling out of their car. Toys that could be packed on a flat piece of cardboard with a bubble holding the toy on, and you could place it on a spinning rack. Those Japanese brainiacs did it again, David Ring was rumored to have said after seeing the toys. The brothers had a whole new plan when they got back to the States. The days of selling cheap toys out of their car was over. They were selling cheap toys that they could hang on a spinning rack at gas stations and five and dime stores. They relaunched their toy empire with La Army Corporation in 1959. With the major toy companies not really caring about movie and TV show tie-ins, the brothers reached deals with almost every studio in Hollywood to sell cheap, low-cost, low-quality toys that had nothing to do with the studio movie or TV show except for a picture of it on the cardboard that would help promote the movie or television show. It was a win-win for the studios and the Ring Brothers. Throughout the 60s and into the 70s, the brothers racked in, and as the movie TV show tie-in business with toys started to explode in the 80s, they were racking in more money than they could ever dreamed of. In 1984, they would hit it big with more than just a cheap toy on a rack when they would meet inventor Alan Omron. Alan had invented post-it notes a few years before. That is unless you ask 3M who say they invented it. And now Alan had a whole new invention that the boys just wanted to be a part of. A battery-powered water gun. The days of pulling that plastic cap off the back of a small plastic gun and filling it with water to shoot off a little stream was about to end. Almost overnight, the Ring Brothers, with the help of Allen, would change the water gun market. Now water guns were bigger, better, holding more water, and shooting the water further and harder than any little kid ever dreamed. And these water guns didn't look like cheap plastic guns anymore. They looked like real Uzis and machine guns. With the success of the battery-powered water gun, the brothers hung up their toy-making hat on a spinner rack and sold the company to Allen David and Ma Yong Song. The Ring Brothers changed water guns overnight, but David and Song would change the water gun business forever. At the 1989 Toy Fair in New York City, the two met JPL engineer Lonnie Johnson, who invented a pressure water air reservoir. The two knew that this was what water guns needed. It would mean no more running to the kitchen sink or to the backyard water hose every five minutes. This would be a water gun that could hold a tank full of water. In 1990, the company would launch Power Drencher, the water gun that made your dad's water gun look like a Yugo. This was bigger, powerful, and best of all, had a lot of water to soak your enemies. However, sales was not what the guys had hoped. They were good, but the guys knew they could make more. So they renamed the Power Drencher to Super Soaker, and the name change brought the company millions of dollars and a lot of attention. In 1993, Talk To Me Product was sued, saying the company came up with a pattern for the battery operator water gun. But the case was dismissed as the patent said their chamber was inside the gun, and the low arm water guns were on top of the gun. In 1995, Hasbro wanted the Super Soaker and would buy low army. They would keep using the La Army name for their super soakers and other water gun toys, like the Star Wars water guns. 
In 2002, they would retire the company name and brand all their water guns under their Nerf brand. They went from selling cheap toys in the back of a car, to selling cheap toys on a gas station spinner rack, to selling the most popular water gun in history. But they will be known to a lot of us in the toy community as the company that gave us the worst TV toy jingle in history with the release of the Battlestar Galactica Cylon Bubble Machine. The Cylon that could blow big bunches of bubbles. There wasn't many lyrics in this jingle, but there was enough to get stuck in a kid's head for months and cause parents to want to smash the TVs. What was it that set everyone off? Well, that was the long, drawn-out yodel of the words Battlestar Galactica. Here, take a listen for yourself. With the Battlestar Galactica Cylon Bubble Machine, each sold separately, you can make lots and lots of shiny bubbles. You start by filling the Cylon Warrior's head with bubble liquid from his body. Then you dip the bubble ring into the liquid. Blow on the tube and out come big bunches of bubbles. Battlestar Galactica Cylon Bubble Machine. The Battlestar Galactica Cylon Bubble Machine comes with three ounce container of bubble liquid. See, isn't that annoying? And don't worry, that will only be stuck in your head for a few weeks. Well, that's a look at the rise and fall of a rack toy company that changed history. Well, I want to thank you for watching. As always, thumb up and like my content. Subscribe to the channel. We'll talk again soon. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.